Hello fellow engineers. Welcome back. We are in the last part of our video series which is focused on front end system engineering for radio astronomy. And in our all our previous videos actually we have seen the entire system development in L band that is the frequency range between 1 and 1.5 gigahertz. And in this particular video we are going to discuss what really happens when we use this kind of system, a feed system in a realistic reflector antenna. If you could recall our previous videos, we started our web series by introducing the front end system. We discussed the choke horn, how its radiation patterns are, what is its aperture efficiency. Then we discussed all other electromagnetic parts of the system like septum polarizer and so on. And then we also discussed the low noise amplifier part of the system followed by injection of noise and the switchable filter bank. So now the system as such is ready. It's a, it's a complete unit and this unit usually sits at the focus of a prime focus reflector. The shape of reflector is usually parabolic and the system is sitting at the focus of this parabola and it's inverted upside down. It means a choke horn sees the shape of the reflector and then whatever field is received, whatever waves are received by the reflector, they get focused at the focus point where our choke horn is sitting and the choke horn receives those waves. Even though this sounds kind of simple that the reflector would, would focus all the radiation towards my horn antenna, in practice, it's a different story. And how the story is different, this is what we are going to cover in this video. And to start with, I will start explaining a very basic parabolic reflector and the far field pattern of an ideal parabolic reflector. And from there, I will start talking about the practical aspects of feed plus reflector combination. So let's have a look at our screen. So what you see on the screen now is actually a 3D model of a reflector antenna whose diameter is 15 meter and the focal length is about 6 meters. And it is modeled in a such a way that the optical axis of the reflector is along positive Z axis and the focus is exactly at the origin of the coordinate system. <clears throat> the blue dot what you see is actually the point where our front end system would sit upside down or inverted. And what I have done that using this WIPLD Pro software, I could import the radiation pattern of the choke horn, which we have already simulated. And you have seen those radiation patterns in say video two of our web series. So it is possible to import the far field of our feed system into this particular reflector antenna analysis. And the blue dot represents that we have a feed there having its own radiation pattern, which is getting radiated out. And then it is being incident on the shape on the surface of the reflector. And this can be analyzed using method of movements and <coughs> As you could see, only one fourth of the reflector structure has been modeled. This is simply to save time because we this is an ideal reflector and it has infinite symmetry planes. So it is possible just to model one fourth of a structure and still get the reasonable results out of the computations. So I have done this analysis. So what I'm going to show you is basically the pattern after the reflector. <coughs> And as you could see on the screen now, the gain after the reflector using the far field pattern of a choke horn antenna is about 44.3, 44.2 dBi on axis gain. And you could see all other features such as side lobes, first nulls and the back lobes in your radiation pattern. And this is as such good but this is not at all practical because the question to answer is 
how would you mount your feed system in such a reflector? You cannot keep the feed system hanging in free air. You have to have a support. So before talking about the support, let me explain how the near field of the reflector looks like when you just have an ideal reflector and a feed which is hanging in free air. So this I have also simulated using WIPLD Pro. And what is coming on screen now is a plane at certain distance above the reflector and how exactly the electric field looks like in this particular horizontal plane cut. And as you could see, the E plane is definitely focused at the center. We have a very nice uh, primary beam of the reflector and then some scattering effects around the edges of the reflector. Now what we will do, we will try to model a practical reflector. Practical reflector has some sort of support legs which holds your feed and also the feed has a finite dimension. Say for example in our system the size of feed is about 600 mm by 600 mm or 60 by 60 centimeters and the feed itself is going to cause some shadowing on the reflector. So the area exactly below the feed is basically a shadow on the reflector and it doesn't contribute at all to the gain of the reflector. So we have to also model such practical aspects in the reflector system along with the feed. And this also I have done. So what I will bring on the screen now is actually the realistic model of the reflector. So now you could see that I have added some support legs, a flat metallic sheet which, which has a size of my feed system and this simply causes a shadow on the reflector and naturally I know the height of my feed system so this particular shadowing plane is somewhat above the origin. And the difference between the origin and this plate is basically the height of my feed system. And some other metallic bars etc because a practical reflector has some sort of lamps, maybe a wind meter etc. So there, there are some other mechanical aspects as well. So we have to model all these tiny details carefully to understand how exactly our reflector system with a given feed behaves in terms of near field as well as far field. So I have done again a similar method of movement analysis using the far field of a choke on antenna which now shines upon my reflector surface along with all other mechanical aspects such as struts and blockage. So I have simulated now this particular reflector and again I could look at the near field, I could look at the far field. But just to give you a fair comparison, what I have done, of course I have simulated the near field of this reflector at the same plane above the reflector as we have done in case of ideal reflector and we are going to compare the two. For that, of course I have imported all this near field calculation data into the Python script and normalized the electric field and actually plotted the three discrete components of the electric field that is EX, EY and EZ. So what you could see now on the screen is basically the electric field above the reflector when we have a choke horn antenna as a feed for the reflector and since we have a choke horn which is say linearly polarized for this particular simulation and the polarization vector is along y-axis, most of the power as you could see on the screen, it is in the y component of the electric field. Due to the blockage and due to the struts etc, now we also have some scattered power in other orthogonal components of the electric field. But now with the same scale, if I try to look back at the ideal case when there were no struts no blockage you could see most of the field is only in the y component or in the desired copolar component of the far field and nothing in the other two orthogonal components 
So what this what this means in reality? In reality, it means that first of all, you will have a loss of power because the field is now not only in your copolar part, but it is also in the two orthogonal components. So it's a loss in efficiency in your reflector antenna system. And this is often referred as a blockage efficiency of a reflector. But also it will increase the side lobe levels in some unwanted direction and you might pick up more noise from the sky or the ground and your overall system noise temperature could go up. This is quite significant for radio astronomy applications since always we have to maximize the aperture efficiency and minimize the system noise temperature in order to achieve the best sensitivity for the radio telescope. So with this video what I have actually shown you is how one could model the practical reflector in WIPLD Pro, simulate the near field and far field after the reflector using the feed data which you have already simulated with some electromagnetic tool and with that you will have an analysis of a complete reflector system. So with this what I found that for an ideal reflector and a blockage reflector at least for the design which I have considered in this example I got roughly 3 to 4 percent reduction in aperture efficiency when the blockage effects and struts effects were introduced. So if you are a reflector antenna designer or a student studying antennas, reflector antennas in general you could also do a similar exercise in your favorite electromagnetic tool and study the effects of blockage and struts in the practical reflector antenna design. So I hope with this video we have now narrowed down our web series to the very last episodes. We have gone through all the parts, system parts as well as the overall performance of the system in a practical prime focus reflector. So in next video I will try to talk something more about front end system component and we'll try to conclude this web series soon. Till then, see you.